Today we're talking about organizing, backing up, and archiving digital photos and videos. Now, I wanted to put together this video because a few years ago, I lost a hard drive full of videos and photos. And since then, I started taking organization, archiving, and backing up seriously. Those who are serious about their photography and videography, or just are serious about keeping an archive of their memories, don't want to be in a situation where they're losing their files. So in this video, I'll first give you a high-level overview of my specific system, and then we'll go through a slower, step-by-step, -step, deep dive into my process of organizing, backing up, and archiving photos and videos. If you prefer to read more about my method, I've written about it on my website, which is linked in the description below. Now, first, a few caveats. This system that I will outline today is my system. It works well for me, and it might not work well for you. But what I want you to take from this video is to develop a system that works for you based on a few principles. Secondly, backing up and archiving your files in a secure way comes at an initial expense. Hard drives, enclosures, and cloud backup services all cost money. That being said, having a system like mine will help you keep your digital files organized and as safe as possible. And it can be much cheaper to set up than it is to recover files from a busted hard drive. For example, this hard drive, the, I contacted two different companies and they both quoted me $500 to extract the files. At the beginning of each month, I create a new folder for the previous month inside a folder of the current year and a dedicated hard drive I call Master Catalog. I connect my SD cards and storage media to my computer and copy all the photos from the previous month into the folder I just created. If I have film scans or videos, they go into a film photography section and a video section, both also organized by year and month. When copying is complete, I open Adobe Bridge and do a basic cull at this point, removing images that are obviously bad. And if I have a lot of time or not a lot of photos, I might add keywords or ratings to the files while I'm in Adobe Bridge. After the culling and keyboarding are done, I use a program called Free File Sync to look for changes in my master catalog and copy the new files to a local RAID configuration for backup. When that's done, I upload these new files to my cloud backup provider. And that's it. When I'm done, I format my SD cards and begin a new month. So that was the high level overview. Now let's break things down a little bit. In order to begin, you'll need some hardware and software. To follow my specific system, you'll need a multi-bay drive enclosure or a NAS system, at least three hard drives or SSDs, one for your master catalog, and at least two for a RAID configuration. You'll need Adobe Bridge, free file sync, and a cloud backup solution. I couldn't afford a NAS, you know, a network attached storage system, so I opted for a USB multi-bay drive enclosure made by Sabrent. Inside the enclosure, I have three Seagate 4 terabyte hard drives. They're not as fast as solid state drives, but they're cheaper and adequate for long-term storage purposes, especially when they're only used once or twice a month. One of the hard drives is my master catalog, and the other two are in a RAID 1 mirror configuration that I made using Disk Utility, a software that comes pre-installed on Apple computers. And if you are on Windows, you have something similar called Disk Management. There are different types of RAID configurations you can use, but I've opted for the RAID 1 mirror configuration. This means an exact copy of the data exists on both RAID drives. To call and organize my images, I use Adobe Bridge. It's a file browsing application made by Adobe, and it's fast, and best of all, it is free. It's perhaps, I think, the best option for organizing digital media, thanks to its powerful sorting, cataloging, and keywording tools. I also use a program called Free File Sync to do bulk copying. It detects new files in my master catalog and copies them over to the RAID drives. Now, to finish things out, you'll need a cloud backup provider. There are many out there. Some well-known providers to consider are iDrive, Backblaze, and AWS. Using your calendar app, and this is an important step, set up a recurring reminder at the beginning of each month to remind you to organize and back up your files. By now, you should have your drives installed and set up in your enclosure and all the software installed. 
In your master catalog drive, make a folder called Digital Photography. And inside that folder, create a folder named after the current year, so 2024. Inside that folder, make a new folder and name it after the month number and the month name of the current month. So 10-October for October. I'm in the middle of editing this video right now, and I just wanted to re-emphasize the point that you don't need to organize your photos this way. You can organize them any way you want. The important point being that you organize them in a way that makes sense for you. Now pop in your SD card and copy all the photos that you took last month into its corresponding folder in your master catalog. Now using Adobe Bridge, do a quick cull and delete all the photos that are obviously bad. And if you have some more time, consider doing some basic keywordings now. When you've finished copying photos to your master catalog, it's time to back everything up. I abide by the 321 backup rule, and you should too. The 321 rule is a widely recommended data protection strategy that involves maintaining three copies of your data stored on two different types of media with one copy kept off site. This approach ensures redundancy in case of unexpected failures. Diversifying storage methods and locations mitigates the risk of single points of failure and data corruption, and you won't lose, like me, entire hard drives. In my system, I have three local copies of my photos. My master catalog hard drive is copy number one. My RAID 1 configuration, which comprises of two mirrored hard drives, is copy two, or also copy three. I also have a copy of my master catalog in the cloud, which is copy three or number four, depending how you count. This is likely overkill, but I value my photography and my files, and I don't want to risk losing my work again. Now, using free file sync, mirror the data from your master catalog to your RAID configuration. If you don't know how to do this, see free file syncs tutorials. This basically creates a local backup or two local backup copies. When this is finished, back up your master catalog to the cloud. This may take some time depending on the size of the catalog and your internet speed, but this creates a remote offsite backup of your data. When done, eject your disks, power down, and unplug your hard drives. I live in Central Florida, you know, the lightning capital of the United States, and I always unplug my electronics when I'm not using them because I don't want them to get fried by a power surge. I only connect my drives when I'm actively organizing, using, or backing things up. This is a low impact practice that ensures minimal wear and tear on the drives and will help prevent power surges from damaging them. So basically, that's it. You're now protected by the 321 rule because you're now maintaining three copies of your data on several different types of media with one copy kept off site. If your house burns down, you're safe. If one hard disk fails, you're safe. If two fail, you're safe. If three fail, you're safe. If your cloud provider loses data, you're safe. You're about as protected as you can possibly be. Anyway, I hope you found this helpful. Thank you for watching.